السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them to bless every one of us to grant us goodness in this dunya as well as the next. Ameen. Dress code degenerating as time passes. You have seen the dress code today. It's getting worse as time passes. It's not getting any better. Subhanallah, I can quickly explain to you. There was a time when man wore very little. So here comes the civilized world and they said, cover up. You know, in Africa, where I come from, the traditional clothing, perhaps the skin of a buck or an animal, maybe from a cow or from a goat, perhaps, and they would wear to cover the front and the back of their private parts. That's it. And perhaps they might, they might have moved around with a few spears in order to protect themselves. That was considered the traditional dress. That's how they used to dress. So here comes the so-called civilized world and gave them clothing and told them, listen, cover yourself. Because if you cover yourself, you are civilized. So then they started wearing, mashallah, tabarakallah, something, you know, to cover their legs, something to cover the top. The women used to wear the long dresses. They used to have hats, the Victorian era. Those hats used to have nets and the net used to come down the face. Mashallah, not only neat, but romantic too, mashallah. And so what happened? They covered themselves correctly. Islam came about and did exactly the same thing. The people used to engage in circumambulation of the Kaaba, known as Tawaf, while they were naked at times. They used to inherit the women, treat them as property. Islam abolished all of that. And Islam says, cover yourself. It's better for you. يا أيها النبي قل لأزواجك وبناتك ونساء المؤمنين يدنين عليهن يدنين عليهن من جلابيبهن ذلك أدنى أن يعرفن فلا يؤذين. O messenger, tell your wives, tell your daughters, and tell the believing women. To dress with their outer garment. You know, when you're leaving the home, you just put on an outer garment. Dress with the outer garment. Because it is better for them to be recognized as chaste women. It is better for them to be recognized as believing women. It is better for them to be recognized with goodness. Rather than to be dressing so provocatively that you are looked at as a sex object as someone who may be cheap, someone who is trying to perhaps stir up the feelings or emotions, etc., of the opposite sex, it would be better if you dressed modestly, if you dressed in a way that would make you a person known as someone who respects themselves to begin with. And that's what the civilized world taught at one stage. Later on, when man wanted to control a woman again and wanted her to forget about what civilization had brought, you know what happened? And the hadith has predicted this. The dressing will degenerate once again. There will be a swap of dress code. Men will dress with the clothing of women and women will dress with the clothing of men. Subhanallah. Such that you won't know the difference. Is this a man or a woman? Good morning, sir. I'm a madam. Oh, oh sorry. I'm sorry. Morning, ma'am. Who told you I'm a madam? Well, it's your clothing. But no, subhanallah. Nowadays, you just say good morning. It's over. You don't need to say sir or madam. If you're a Muslim, you're fortunate. You can say salam alaikum, my brother. At least they have beards. Alhamdulillah. So... <laughs> The prediction of Muhammad وسلم, that, or the prophecy that the clothing would degenerate. If we take a look today, they will tell you that part of civilization is actually to undress. 
The less you wear, the more liberated you are. What happened to our forefathers only 50 years ago who actually fought nudity in order to bring in civilization? What happened to that? Take a look at the colonialists who went across the globe. What did they do? I'm talking of dress code. They taught that look, cover yourselves. They came to Africa. They taught us in Africa to cover ourselves. Now they're changing their minds. Why? Why once again? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, Islam teaches you purity. Islam says you will not be judged because you have nice legs. You will not be judged because your hair blows in the wind. You will not be judged because your face is flawless. You will not be judged because of you're the shape of your body. You will be judged because of who you are, how your character and conduct is and how your relationship with your maker is. You will be judged by your contribution to humankind and your dedication to the maker of humankind. Subhanallah, that's Islam. So Allah says, just cover. When people look at you, they mustn't say, Salaamu Alaikum, how are you? Wow, just because you look nice, you know, Alhamdulillah. You look so good, everyone's greeting you. No, they should greet you with respect based on the fact that you are a decent human being and a servant of Allah, a creature of Allah. That is Islam. That is the purity of Islam. When Allah says, cover yourself, it is in order for you to earn respect. Wallahi, those who don't cover themselves, they can say what they want. They are making themselves cheap, very, very cheap. And they are insulting the other sisters or the others of the same gender who may not have exactly what they have. They are adding so much pressure on society and community. People are dying as a result of wanting to be size zero do you know what happens they used to say oh this person's a size 10 well mashallah not bad size 8 okay fine sorry i should have started at 14. uh <laughs> then also it's alhamdulillah okay they get down until they get to size one <laughs> you almost you have almost disappeared what happened to you you don't eat and after that no size zero hello sister where are you you were here a minute ago what happened <laughs> totally invisible allahu akbar May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us.